<laughs> um, increase equity exposure, that's the obvious narrative. To where? Um, right now, we are actually more prone to non-DM countries, okay. given though, yes, we see that it seems like Europe is skirting recession, mm -hmm. and U.S. seems to be doing better than expected, mm -hmm. but still, we see that, for example, U.S., the rate expectation is due to the upside, mm -hmm. and then Europe is still with, like, energy crisis, etc. Mm -hmm. So, but then with Asia, we are actually quite positive and remain quite constructive, especially on China A shares, mm -hmm. because... Um, Asia, we, we see the old, whole reopening momentum actually faster than expected, and we see recovery and like mobility, etc. And so overall, we think Asia is still way to go and quite constructive. What did you make of just the Fed and, and, and the reaction we're seeing in the markets? Um, you know, a, a Fed pause is not really a Fed pivot. Is it really the environment much better now mm. than 2022? Are we? Are we? Is there a chance of still? You know, we could still see that volatility reemerge. Right now, I still believe there might still be volatility, especially as um, people still continue to try and price in whether recession is happening and actually inflation whether it's coming down. Yes, we we do see like inflation risk seems to be subsiding a bit, but then right now after this current meeting, uh, we do still think there might be another chance of a rate hike, 25 basis points probably in March. By March, we'll get two more sets of data, like two more sets of labor market report and two more sets of inflation readings. And by then, there might be more certainty. But still, we still need more clarity on that. Fine. So assuming that the maximum number of hikes we'll get is, say, say, 50 basis points, for example, of hikes and 50 maybe of cuts I into the end of this year. Maybe cuts, we can talk about that next time. But if it's 50 maximum, what does it mean for fixed income? Do I start buying bonds now before this rally accelerates even further? Right now, at the current juncture, we still think recession is uh, probably uh, approaching still, given that market is pricing an over 90% okay. of recession approaching. But then one, one good thing is that if it's actually happening, it's probably going to be mild and shallow. And uh, because this is like pretty well predicted. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the impact on market, on equity market won't be as huge. But then on bonds, we still think credit market is a good way for income seekers to uh, go a safer option to pick up yields. Can, can you still chase the China rally, do you think, despite, yeah. you know, how much we've gone up already? Yes, indeed. We, we think like X share, like MSCI China, etc. it has actually risen by like over 50% since the lows on mm. October 31st. But then there's still some uh, upside in Asia, for example, because it's only up by around 20%. And with Asia, we still remain quite constructive in medium to long term, because given all the structural themes, and now that the reopening momentum is faster and actually stronger than expected, we do think uh, investors will start actually uh, revisiting those themes and most importantly actually positioning remain quite light with global investors that we talk to like Asian investors they have been increasing positioning but we still think there's still some upside so as we were talking right the mechanics of this a share market seems to be going the opposite of what we see offshore right so you mentioned a share market might present more upside it also didn't fall as much last year right and I you know I looked at things like uh, positioning leverage uh, margin debt hasn't picked up on the Asia mm. market. Why do you think onshore equities haven't woken up as quickly as they have in Hong Kong? I think because of its correlation to like the whole global indices and probably because Asia is still quite focused with retail investors okay. who are not as sensitive to like geopolitical risk and okay. all the headlines. Mm. So maybe that's the possible reason. But all the policy supportive sectors are actually mostly focused on um, Asia as the well. So those will be key upside. Mm. Uh, earnings, are, are you thinking that this could still look better than what we're seeing in the US as well in Asia? In Asia, actually, we see on Ch in China right now, uh, with some of the listed companies with earnings preview, actually over 60% are misses. Uh, but probably is to reflect what happened over COVID. But we do see some earnings upgrade going ahead, going forward.